Hello, it's Bridget. It's time for Sunday morning coffee with Bridget. Today we're going to have a conversation about Shakti. What is Shakti? What does that mean? We're going to have a conversation. I'm going to educate you all about that. Step into the priestess energy and the goddess temple. Okay, it's not going to be that dramatic, but let's talk about it. Are you ready? All right, let's begin. So Shakti energy at its core for me represents the fire element. So I work with the energy of fire, which is alchemical, because I do work in clearing and healing ways when I read energy. That's what happens when I do private session with people. I read your energy. I'm really good at it. It's considered alchemy or being an alchemist when you can kind of move energy or shift energy or see energy and then perceive it and share it with people so that they can then shift change and adjust it in a way that will then most benefit them to be in alignment with their their greatest good or their highest intention for their lives. Okay. So to me, that represents the energy of fire. Fire to me is connected most deeply to my sacral chakra, which is the womb space. Now y'all know I got kids. I've had some babies in my time and my identification with my sacral chakra up to this point in my life has been very much a very utilitarian kind of perspective. Oh yes, I have done priestessing work and understand that the rise of the divine feminine and the awakening of the Shakti energy is about grabbing the power as a divine feminine woman and working with my femininity in all the ways that I could express that. In some people, it's the way you dress. In some people, it's the way you present yourself in a physical way or for others it's the way you talk or the way you speak or the way you think about life the music you like the the food that you eat the way that you that you move through the world energetically and how you receive information and energy all of this can be connected to the divine feminine or the divine woman experience now For me specifically, the sacral chakra has been a place that is a temple. It really is a temple. It's like a red tent for me, a place where you can go to, where you can be your pure self that is sacred and private and other people's no, got no business in my sacral chakra and my temple. The thing is, is about, oh, back in 2016, I chose Shakti as my word of the year. Ah, yeah. Oh, shock. Shakti. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. No concept about what desire was, no concept really about kundalini and the energy of that life source or what Shakti really meant. I just thought fire, perfect, I can handle this. So my experience in this space was really about understanding my sacral chakra as a divine feminine temple that was this like sacred place that I would go to and like with an altar and just kind of connect with, red tent it, like just be safe and held and supported. As I grew in my work, especially in my divine feminine work and supporting women in through coaching and intuition work, I discovered that the Shakti energy was way more than what I thought it was. It's not just the embodiment of the divine feminine and the balancing of the Shiva energy. It's not a Hindu term only. It's not a Buddhist term. It's not a religious religious definition or descriptor. It is a transcendent energy of fire and of what life light is. And for me, that embodiment came through learning yoga back in 2016, working with the energy of my word of the year as Shakti, starting on a path of starting to at least open up to the concept of having my own dreams, my own wants without judgment of it being selfish, which has been a constant struggle. I know many of you feel the same way when you have your own personal dreams and you have children or you're in a relationship you feel very, you can feel very selfish to even have wants outside of this beautiful life that you already have. Like you should be grateful. You should be grateful. And then the whole spiritual development world talking about, well, let's make gratitude lists. Let's have gratitude journals. Because why? Because women, you should be happy for what you have. Ah, 
Yeah, okay, whatever. Um, yes, gratitude is great. It's one tool, one way of expression. We are talking about Shakti, okay? So life source energy is this energy of vibrancy within you, the radiance within you. It's not just sexual energy. It's not just sensual energy. It's transcendent, pure source energy that is so powerful, so creative that you cannot even touch it with your bare hands because it would burn your skin off. It is alchemical, it is catalyzing like a lightning bolt. It is like hot liquid lava. This is what Shakti is. It is creative, it is passionate, it is a beautiful performance, watching dancers move on stage and create a story of energy and movement and life through their physical human embodiment of Shakti energy. It is also the most passionate lovemaking you've ever had in your life. It is also the most creative ideas that you have in your heart that what if you could possibly be let loose and have the freedom and liberation and independence to achieve? Oh my gosh, can you imagine if your wildest dreams were not just fantasy, but they were Shakti-fueled and sponsored by Shakti? Imagine how incredible your life could be. Yet here you are with your gratitude, talking about this concept of this term called Shakti, wondering if it's some priestessing special secret passcode or something, or if it's some kind of, you know, ritual thing that if you're a guy or if you have a guy body that it doesn't work for you. Um, no. There's no identification with a gender or a body type. Let's be real clear, real clear, everyone. Although Shakta and Shiva energy do claim a dominant leadership role in the divine feminine Shakti and the divine masculine Shiva, they are at one with one another. They create the sacred energy of life source and the Kundalini power comes from both of them working together, melding together, blending with one another, the sacred connection of the two. And one without the other is not whole. Not that there is need or less than in one identifying energy, whether it be Shakti or Shiva. But so Shakti, life, source, energy, this is like production. This is productivity. You want to have a routine, a ritual. You want to find a pattern, a rhythm, a cycle. Shakti is your vibe, whether you're, you're um, a productive executive assistant somewhere, helping somebody else be productive, or whether you are creating art. You're writing your next novel. You are feeling into your next job opportunity or you are dedicated to learning as a student, looking forward to your dreams of the Shakti of the life that you will be sharing and unfolding after you graduate from, from school and you go into the world and you share your life source energy with others. Oh my goodness, beautiful, just so, so beautiful. Shout out to the college kids. Yeah, yeah, thank you for listening. Let's also shout out to the non-gendered energy of Shakti. Although, like I said, Shiva and Shakti is traditionally masculine, feminine balancing. Let's shout out to the non-gender identification or personification of Shakti energy. Let's embrace and embody through divine feminine, whatever physical body you're presenting, your essence has the alchemy and element of divine feminine. Just feel it, just breathe it in now. If you're a dad of three kids, just breathe that in and exhale it out. If you're a gay man, just breathe it in and exhale out and embrace the love of that Shakti in the heart chakra. A lot of gold alchemical energy here. Gold is that sacral chakra or that solar plexus mixing with the heart chakra coming up to be present for you to support your life purpose as a loving being, a being of love, a being of light, energetically and in your human form. All right. Woo, Shakti's got a lot of energy. So how do you work with Shakti energy? Let's talk about that. Yoga, great way to do that. Being out in nature, whether you're walking, you're biking, you're swimming, you are in nature. Whether you take your sketchbook out and go sketch on a bench at the park, or whether you 
um, literally bring your journal and you park in the car because it's pouring down rain, but you want to be at the park. So you're sitting in your little car. And I know this because I am there. I am right with you. I am feeling you. I am you in my Betty, my psychic minivan in the parking lot uh, at the lake of the park. And it's pouring down rain and I'm journaling. And it is the most beautiful, etheric, peaceful cadence, the rhythm of the rain. And that is Shakti in her cooling, formidable, healing, penetrative energy. I say her because that's how I identify. When I say Shakti and I say her, that's because that's how I feel her and receive her. You may feel Shakti in different colors, in different rays of light, in different energetic vibrations, and different embodiments. Just to acknowledge that and allow your customization of your own personal Shakti experience to be beautiful and valued here. Okay. All right, take a breath in. And an exhale out. Shakti energy is often very red and root grounded. It can connect with the passionate drive and desire and ambition of the sacral chakra, whether that be ambition of the ultimate entrepreneur, the ambition of the student who wants that job, that wants to land that first job, or the, um, the energy of that single person out there dating, wanting to find the love of their Shakti lives. <laughs> so we've got the rich red root chakra, the sweet orange alchemical energy of the sacral chakra, and we have the solar plexus, the sun chakra, the fire light chakra of that solar, solar plexus, honoring your spirit, your intuition, your gut instincts, your intuitive power, your inner knower, as my friend Shirley would say, in that yellow, beautiful solar plexus chakra. So those bottom three chakras coming together to create that base of understanding, just a base for you to connect to, of Shakti energy. And Shakti energy moves all throughout the body. It's in the throat chakra, the crown chakra, the third eye chakra, the heart chakra. But for us here today, connecting in, we're starting at the base with the base six, root sacral solar plexus. Got it? All right, nice, very nice. And your fire, your Shakti fire, doesn't have to be a flamethrower. Doesn't have to be a volcano ready to erupt. It can be a slow burn a simmer, it can be a tea light, or a sweet candle floating in a bathtub ready for your body to just slip right into that warm water of the tub. (laughs) You know exactly what I'm saying. Hello embodiment, the body loves the Shakti energy. Let's just make sure we honor your body this week on Sunday morning coffee. Love your body, be present for your body, give your body back the energy it needs. And sometimes the only way you can get that is through rest, not pushing, pushing, forcing, forcing, bringing in a natural glow within you that comes and rejuvenates when you rest. So let's make sure you're paying attention and honoring your beautiful Shakti body as you are moving through this week and beyond. All right. So this is Bridget. It's been my pleasure to connect and share with you my concept of Shakti energy. I hope you've enjoyed this just brief introduction and this kind of playful presentation of Sunday Morning Coffee with Bridget. Before you leave, make sure you like and subscribe to Above Life channel that hosts our weekly podcasts on Sunday morning, of course. And if you're looking for me, you can visit me at Fairy Grasshopper, where I post videos multiple times a week there on all intuitive and real life psychic stuff that I experience and share with you in a beautiful, wonderful, intuitive relationship. If you're looking for me on social media, you can find me on Bridget Inspired on Facebook or Bridget Inspired on Instagram. Thanks for listening.